Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Well, after um, listening to the lecture about what trigonometric equations actually are, well, it's time to solve a few problems in this. So we will solve some trigonometric equations. Now, um, we do know how to solve the basic trigonometric equation, something like this one. We already discussed that during the lecture. So, any kind of a trivial uh, manipulation with this particular equation, something like uh, you know, 2 cosine of 3x plus 7 equals to 1. I'm not going to do this type of thing because it's really trivial and it's very easily uh, reduced to the basic one. So, my uh, purpose right now is to uh, to talk about equations which are not trivial. Don't forget that the whole purpose of, the, of this course is not to give you certain uh, like skills. Okay, this is the case, and if you meet situation like this in the future, you have to do that. No, the purpose is to prepare you to unknown, uh, to, to challenge your mind with something which you just don't know how to do it, and you have to think about um, how to, in this case, solve trigonometric equation. There are no, like, no methodology to solve any particular, uh, you know, situation to, to, to help you to do anything else in the future. Now, everyone is, every, 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 every problem is separate, and you have to really go through many of them to develop the whole repertoire of um, different approaches, different methodologies, etc. It all accumulates into your mind. So, my um, purpose right now is to present you with a few trigonometric equations which uh, are not that trivial as I was just uh, trying to exemplify. Okay, so let's just do it. I have three different equations uh, for this particular lecture, so let's do it one by one. Okay, the first one is simple. Uh, sine of x plus cosine of x equals a. Well, obviously, a cannot be anything. Uh, as we know, the sine and cosine are limited. Um, they are from minus 1 to 1, so a cannot be 25, for instance, obviously. Well, actually, it's much lower the boundaries of the A, which which you can uh, derive with. But anyway, how to solve this particular equation? Well, it goes to some property of sine plus cosine, and in the corresponding lecture about sum of two uh, angles, I have a lecture dedicated specifically to linear combination of uh, sine and cosine of the same argument, x in this particular case. So I will use exactly the same approach, but instead of general approach as in that lecture, I'll, I'll use a very uh, concrete example. So what I'm going to do is the following. Um, I will multiply the equation by square root of 2 over 2. That does not change uh, the solutions, the uh, the domain of the of the functions, etc. It's a completely equivalent transformation. Now let's recall that square root of two over two is a cosine of 45 degrees and a sine as well. They are equal. So sine 45 degrees equal cosine of 45 degrees equals 2 square root of 2 over 2. Remember the Pythagorean theorem? If this is 1, this is 1. This is 45 degree, this is 45 degree. And hypotenuse by the Pythagorean theorem is 1 square plus 1 square is 2, so it's square root of 2. Right? So the cosine of 45 degree of this angle, for instance, is equal to uh, 1 over square root of 2, which is the same as square root of 2 over 2, right? 
and same is sine. It's exactly the same. It's also one opposite catheters over hypotenuse. So we know this. So that's what I'm going to use. And instead of square root of 2, in this case, I will put sine of 45 degrees or pi over 4. Uh, I prefer to do uh, the radians if you are talking about um, equations. Sine x plus, and this, cos, uh, this uh, square root over 2, uh, I will put as a cosine of p over 4. Cosine of x is equal to this. Now, what is this? Remember, formula for cosine of the uh, difference between two angles. It's cosine by cosine plus sine by sine. So that's exactly what it is. Now, and this is already a basic uh, trigonometric equation, which we have considered before uh, during the lecture. So x minus pi over 4 is equal to plus minus arc cosine of square root of 2 over 2a, from which x is equal to pi over 4 plus minus arc cosine. So that's the general solution. Actually, to be exact, you have to add 2 pi n in this case and 2 pi n because the cosine is a periodic function, so all solutions are uh, expressed in this particular formula. Um, well, that's it. That's relatively simple thing. Now, what kind of a lesson I would like to actually uh, for you to, 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 to learn from this particular thing? Just looking at that particular equation from the very beginning, it's not obvious, of course, what's the approach, how to solve it. But, however, this is a guess, if you wish. Um, you really have to um, be prepared that solving certain trigonometric equations, well, actually solving any good mathematical problem, requires you to find a good approach. Because most likely you never dealt with this particular problem before. So every time you solve another problem which you don't know how to solve, it's very important for you to come up with new methods. That's what develops your creativity. And that's the whole purpose of this course, by the way. So I am trying to present to you as many things which you just don't know what to do, and you have to really think about what to do. And that's why I'm always asking you to try to solve all these problems before you're listening to the lecture which I'm, where I'm explaining the solutions. So, by the way, if you didn't do it for this particular uh, lecture, I, I do encourage you to, to, to pause the video and try to solve these two remaining problems just by yourself first, and then listen to the lecture. All right, next one. Next one is sine square x plus sine square 2x equals sine square 3x plus sine square 4x. Again, I basically claim that this is not your typical equation, which you know beforehand or you are taught beforehand how to solve you have to invent a new methodology to solve these particular, uh, this particular equation. All right. So, first of all, um, if you are thinking about methodology, how to solve this equation, first, which I personally think is natural, um, you should think about these being square of something, Nobody likes squares, everybody likes the first degree, right? So the, the lower the degree, the easier it is. Can we represent square, sine square x, in terms of lower degree of some, some trigonometric function? Well, yes, of course. Remember this. Cosine 2 phi is equal to, it's cosine 
of phi plus phi, so it's a sum of two angles, which means it's cosine phi times cosine phi, which is cosine squared, minus, so this is plus phi plus phi, so this is minus, sine phi times sine phi, which is sine squared phi, right? Or, since I need sines, I can, uh, I can replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared, because cosine squared plus cosine, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to, easy, to, to, to 1, right? So that's 1 minus sine squared and another sine squared, so it's 2 sine squared phi. Okay, this is the key where, which I can use to convert sine squared with a plane cosine, right? So sine squared phi equals uh, 1 minus cosine 2 phi over 2, right? From this. 1 minus cosine, sine squared goes here and divided by 2, right? So that's what I'm going to use, where phi can be either x or 2x or 3x or 4x, and all squares will be turned into the first degree of the cosine, right? All right. Fine, let's do it. So what I have is 1 minus, if phi is x, I have 1 minus cosine 2x over 2 plus 1 minus cosine 4x over 2 equals 1 minus cosine 6x over 2 plus 1 minus cosine double 4, which is 8x over 2. That's the equation which I have. Now, obviously, I can multiply it by 2, and 1 will be reduced. It's 2 on this side and 2 on this side. And then minus, 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 I will change to plus, 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 plus. I'll just multiply by minus 1. And the final equation which I have, which seems to be easier than the original, is this one. Now, these are completely equivalent uh, transformations. So it's invariant transformation. So let me wipe out this. Actually, I don't need this one either. So I have reduced my original um, trigonometric equation to this form using invariant transformations. And this looks easier, right? OK. Now, what's next? So first, I converted the second degree to the first degree. Now, I have pluses and minuses of different cosines. Now, I have it on the left, I have it on the right. And if you remember, um, any sum of two cosines or difference between the cosines can be represented as a product. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I would like, if I will convert it into product, something, if I do it smartly, something might actually be reduced. So let me try. Now, instead of 2x, now, you remember actually I did exactly the same when I was, when, when I was talking about uh, trigonometric series. If you have a cosine of the same, uh, uh, of the angles which are separated by the same difference, I divided the difference in half and I converted every member as half minus or half plus, this particular. Uh, so if, if I have 2x and then 4x, then I can have 3x, and this is 3x minus x, and this is 3x plus x, right? 2x is 3x minus uh, x, and 4x is 3x plus x. So that's what I'm going to do here. And then if I will write, if I will do it correctly, I hope it will be uh, something will be reduced. So this is this. Right? And here I will do exactly the same thing. In between you have 7x, right? So it's 7x minus x plus 7x plus x. So that's the same equation. I just replace 2x with 3x minus x and 4x with 3x plus x, and the same there. Why is it easier? Well, think about this way. This is cosine times cosine plus sine times sine. 
This is cosine times cosine minus sine times sine. And sines will be reduced, so I would have a product of cosine 3x times cosine x. That's it. Right? Cosine 3x plus cosine 3x times cosine x plus sine times sine. And this is minus. Actually, there is a multiplier 2. One from here and one from there. And here is the same thing. Cosine 7x times cosine x. Then plus sine times sine. And this will be minus sine times sine. So that's exactly what will be left. And obviously I can reduce by 2. Now, is it easier? Of course it is easier. Because number 1, we have common multiplier. So immediately we have cosine x equals to 0 as potential solutions to our equation. Because if it's equal to 0, then the left part is 0 and the right part is 0. Now, this one is x is equal to pi over 2 plus pi n. OK, so we found a few solutions. Now, we want to find other solutions when the cosine of x is not equal to 0. But if it's not equal to 0, I can reduce it and have only cosine 3x equals to cosine 7x. And then I will do exactly the same. It's cosine 7x minus cosine 3x is equal to 0. And I will convert the difference between these two cosines into a product. So what I will do, the same thing. It's cosine 5x. 5 is in, in between the 7 and 3. Minus, uh, sorry, plus 2x minus cosine 5x minus uh, 2x. Right? Now this is cosine times cosine minus sine sine. This is cosine cosine plus sine sine. Right? So the cosine will be reduced and the sines will remain. So I will have from here minus sine 5x sine 2x and from here this would be the plus, right? So uh, this minus so will be minus again. The same thing. Right? Now they are identical, so basically the solution is sine 5x sine 2x is equal to 0. So that's another thing, which has in turn two different solutions. Either sine 2x is equal to 0, and the result is 2x is equal to pi n, where n is any, any integer, and x is equal to pi over 2 n. Or sine of 5x is equal to 0, which means 5x is equal to pi n, and x is equal to pi over 5n. So we have three different cases, and this one. But if you look at this, this one includes these points. That's very easy to determine, right? Because this is pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, etc. And this one, just every, one, every, every other one from these points. So basically, we can disregard this solution, and these two constitute the solution to a trigonometric equation, which was in the beginning. Which looked kind of scary initially, but after a few transformations, and what we did actually, we always used exactly the same approach. We transformed a difference between tri tri uh, trigonometric functions into their product, and then something actually was reduced. That's it. Next one. Next one is, again, it looks a little unusual, but it's still kind of solvable, more or less, the same methodology.
sine of pi cosine x is equal to cosine of pi sine x. Yeah, looks, again, a little bit unusual. Scary if you wish. So, what can we do? Well, let's think about what we were using before. We were converging uh, a, a difference or a sum of uh, cosines or sines into the product. Well, let's try to do exactly the same thing, except we have sine and cosine. They are different functions, and we don't really know what sine minus cosine is. I mean, how to convert it. But I can always, I, I can always convert cosine into a sine, right? Remember? Cosine of phi is equal to sine of phi over 2 minus phi. This is one of the classic identities uh, of trigonometry. So I will replace uh, the cosine on the right with the corresponding sine. And then I will bring everything to the left. So I will have sine of pi cosine x minus sine of pi over 2 minus pi sine of x equals to 0, right? So cosine is equal to sine of pi over 2 minus angle, and then I transfer it to the left. Okay, great. Now, now let's think about how to convert difference between the signs into their product. And that's very useful because when it will be the product and it's equal to zero, which means every multiplier is equal to zero by itself, right? So it's easier. Uh, I'll use exactly the same uh, approach as in the previous problem. Remember, if you have sine of alpha, in this case minus sine of beta, how to convert it into product and uh, uh, a product of different trigon trigonometric functions. Well, alpha can be represented as sine of alpha plus beta over 2 uh, minus beta minus alpha over 2, right? Uh, minus beta, 12, yes. And this can be represented as alpha plus beta over 2 plus beta minus alpha over 2. Alpha will be reduced, beta will be 2, yes. And this is um, difference between the sine, between the uh, sine difference between two angles is what? Sine cosine minus cosine sine, right? So it would be sine of alpha plus beta over 2 times cosine beta minus alpha over 2 minus cosine alpha plus beta over 2 sine beta minus alpha over 2 minus sine cosine plus cosine sine. But this is minus in front, so I will have everything with a minus sign. Sine alpha plus beta over 2 cosine beta minus alpha over 2 minus cosine alpha plus beta over 2 sine beta minus alpha over 2. So what's reduced? This one. So I will have uh, minus 2 cosine alpha plus beta over 2 sine of beta minus alpha over 2. That's what I have, right? So that's what sine minus sine alpha minus sine beta is. This is how to convert it into, into a product. Okay, so let's use it in this particular case. So this is alpha, this is beta, right? And since it's equal to zero, uh, minus and two are insignificant. I will, uh, I will retain only cosine and sine. So 
So it would be cosine of alpha plus beta over 2. So it's pi cosine x over 2 plus uh, pi over 4 minus pi sine x over 2. Right? This is sum of two angles, alpha plus beta, divided by 2. So it's half of this, half of this, and half of this, times sine of the difference beta minus alpha, which is pi over 4 minus pi over 2 sine x minus pi cosine x over 2. And this is equal to 0, which means this can be equal to 0, and that's the solutions, or this can be equal to 0, which is the solution. Well, let's just consider two cases separately. So, when the cosine uh, of something is equal to 0, when it's equal to pi over 2 plus pi n, right? So, pi cosine x over 2 plus pi over 4 minus pi sine x over 2 equals to pi over 2 plus pi n. So that's one set of solutions. And as you see, pi is conveniently reduced, right? So if we will multiply everything uh, by what? By 2, right? So you reduce pi and we multiply by 2. I will have cosine x minus sine x equals 2. p over 2 minus p over 4, it's p over 4. But we multiply by 2, so it's pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. Am I right? I'm sorry. 1 half. There is no pi here. It's 1 half minus 1 quarter. We reduced pi. And plus n. That's what it is. Okay. So that's one thing. Now, the second thing is when this particular expression is equal to 0, and when sine is equal to 0, when the angle equals to pi n, right? So pi over 4 minus pi sine x over 2 minus pi cosine x over 2 equals to pi n. Again, pi, pi is conveniently reduced. So what do we have instead? Uh, we have sine and cosine, let's put it to the right, with a plus sine. Uh, so we'll have cosine x plus sine x equals 2. Uh, so we multiply by 2, so it's uh, 1 pi over 4, so it's so it's 1, 2, 1, one half. Now, pi n would be on this side. So it's n, actually, because pi we reduced, and we multiplied by 2, so it's minus 2n. Now, since n is any integer number, it doesn't really matter whether we put n, uh, uh, minus 2n or plus 2n. So it's exactly the same thing. So we have two different equations, actually. So our one equation, whatever it was in the beginning, is split into two different equations. Well, actually not two, infinite number of equations, because n can be any integer number. But can it? Actually not. Let's consider this is cosine and sine. Each one of them 
is not greater than 1 and not less than minus 1, right? So the sum of them or difference between them just by definition cannot exceed 2 or be less than minus 2, right? So obviously n cannot be anything. n can be 0, that's true. But if n is equal to 1, as you see, in both cases we have 2 and a half, so it's completely out. It's, it's greater than 2, and this cannot exceed 2, because each one cannot exceed 1. Now, on the negative side, minus 1 is still possible, because minus 1 would be what? Um, minus uh, 3 seconds, right? So we have either 1 half or minus 3 halves. And same here. So that's the only available n's, n is equal to 0 or n is equal to minus 1, when these equations at least make sense. But let's go even further. Now, you remember that the first equation which I did today in the lecture was cosine x plus sine x is equal to a. Remember this? And I solved it. So uh, let's solve it again. So what I did the first time, I multiplied by square root of 2 over 2, and having cosine x cosine pi over 4, that's square root of 2, divided by 2, plus, well, let's start with the top one, with a minus. Minus sine x sine pi over 2 equals 2. Well, let's do one half first. So I multiply by square root of 2 over 2, right? So that's square root of 2 over 4. That's my equation with one half, which is actually what? A cosine of uh, x plus pi over 4 is equal to square root of 2 over 4. Correct? From this, we can say that x plus pi over 4 is equal to plus minus arc cosine co uh, square root of 2 over 4 plus 2 pi. I'll use another number, k. k is signifying any integer number. So x is equal to minus pi over 4 plus minus arc cosine square root of 2 over 4 plus 2 pi k. So that's what I have if I take 1 half. OK, fine. This is done. Now, what if I have minus 3 halves? Um, if I have minus 3 halves, I will have minus 3 halves times square root of 2 over 2, right? Which is minus 3 square root of 2 over 4. Now, let's think about it. Square root of 2 is approximately 1.4, etc. Times 3 would be 4.2 etc. Divided by 4 would be greater than uh, 1 by absolute value. Uh, actually, in this case, it's less than minus 1. And the cosine cannot be less than minus 1. So the whole case is uh, uh, does not have any solutions. The cosine cannot be less than minus 1 or greater than 1. So this is no good. Now, let's go to this one. So it's plus. And again, let's start with one half. So I have here square root of 2 over 4. Now, since this is a plus, this is a minus. 
cosine of x minus pi over 4 is this. And it's equal to square root of 2 over 4. And now I have minus here. So the x is equal to plus pi over 4. Now, to combine both solutions, the old one was minus and the new one was plus, I'll put plus minus here. So now I have basically four different combinations of pi over 4 and arc cosine of uh, square root of 2 over 4. Plus plus, plus minus, minus plus, or minus minus. And now for, so this is done. Now for minus 3 half, I have exactly the same consideration. I will have uh, minus 3 quarters of square root of 2, which is by absolute value greater than 1, so there is no solutions here. So basically, that's it. We, we finally got all the solutions, and that's the result. Where, chi, where k is any integer number. Well, it, that's it for today. These three problems are um, important in some way because I was trying to put something non-trivial. But let's just think about what kind of methodology I was using. Primarily, it's just converging sine uh, uh, minus sine or sine plus sine uh, into product. And then the um, solution is easier because if the product of two uh, of two variables uh, is equal to zero, then either one variable or another is equal to zero. So just remember, this is approach, this is the methodology, and whenever something else comes up, this is one of your instruments in your toolbox. And that's the purpose, to put not the exact solutions to all the problems which you can just see in the future, but to equip you with sufficient number of tools which you can use to achieve the goal. Well, that's it for today. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, good luck for new, with new problems, which uh, I'm definitely going to put on my website. Thank you.